Hey there, welcome to No Nonsense November Day 21. Sharon Horn Elfstam here. And today and tomorrow, we're going to talk about topics that are really interrelated. I started thinking about problem solving decision making, which is PSDM. And I thought, well, that's a good one for today. Now, I will secretly tell you, and it's not so secret, that I think about what I'm going to talk about in the, the No Nonsense November tool. What tool am I going to share the night before I do it? And then I sleep on it and then I talk about it the next day. Well, today I was, and yesterday I was thinking about problem solving decision making, and it's such a big topic. Like most of the topics in the tools we've talked about so far, right? They're much bigger than a 10 or 15 minute discussion on them. And the power in them is when you actually look into them and use them and try them out yourself. So problem solving decision making, what the heck is it? What does it mean? What does it stand for? I'm cheating a little bit because I have got a couple of things I want to talk about. Today we're going to focus on what the heck is problem solving and decision making and a couple of, of the process of doing that because problem solving is a process just like so many other things decision making is really an action uh, and it's part of the process but people intertwine and interchange and cross the definitions of them all the time one of my favorite things i found out as i was looking into this and researching this was pompous names for problem solving and decision making and i'll share those with you and then tomorrow we're going to do the next thing i which is focusing on solutions and and we'll talk about the importance of focusing on solutions and part of this two-day discussion i'll share a list of 35 or so tools that i found from a place called success lab many of which most of which i've heard of or used before a couple uh, are just techniques that I've used before and, and participated in, but they've got different names. They have some really cool names for the things that they um, teach because they, of course, teach a four-day seminar on problem solving and decision making, a four-day workshop that they want you to go to. Uh, but So today, problem solving decision making. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about focusing on, focusing on solutions. And throughout the course of that, I'm going to share at least 35 different tools and strategies and techniques as long as and along with a bunch of tips and things that can help you to make decision making quick and easy. Now, we can make problem solving and decision making using any of these pompous names and, and, and techniques. Let's let's just look at some of those linear problem solving, a additive difference, problem solving and decision making, ideal point models, conjunctive, conjunctive problem solving and decision making, disjunctive problem solving and decision making, lexicographic problem solving and decision making, elimination by aspect problem solving and decision making. So we can make up all these crazy names for it, or we can keep it really simple. Um, when it comes to decision making tools, I have found over my decades of experience that we want to make sure that the, the uh, decision making tool that we're using fits the situation. If I am deciding where what I'm going to wear today or where I'm going to go to dinner with friends, I don't need a massive matrix and model and complicated technique for deciding that type of a decision but you know deciding among alternatives and creating a new product line for my for my business would require a much more complicated probably a matrix team type approach to solving that particular problem so it always depends on what is what is the extent of the problem but what is the problem solving process there's a lot of them i actually worked with a team and we wrote a book about problem solving and decision making for our organization when i was in corporate america Yikes, 25 years ago now, maybe longer, long time ago. Um, and it was, of course, called Problem Solving Decision Making. <laughs> I'm sure I have a copy of it somewhere, but uh, not handy. Otherwise, I would show you the nice little model that we created of the six step process for problem solving and decision making. Now, like anything else, you can find lots of tools, 35 or more tools to help you with problem solving decision making, or you can just find a five or six step process. So, what is a process of deciding among alternatives and that's that's a process in and of itself how do you choose among alternatives which is part of what we'll discuss in focusing on solutions but <clears throat> what's the process for problem solving right how do we know and what do we do to go about solving a problem well the first thing we do is we define the problem one of the biggest mistakes people make when they're addressing a problem or a situation or a change or a challenge is they're actually not solving the problem i experienced this in my personal life when i was sick when I got sick in my early 20s, I <clears throat> was going to a lot of doctors and specialists and each one of them, since they didn't have a team approach like Mayo Clinic does nowadays, each one of them was addressing what was wrong with me from their perspective, from their area of expertise, but they nobody was looking at, well, is any of this interrelated? Are these things, are these just symptoms 
of a bigger systemic thing that was going on. Well, it turns out it was a bigger systemic thing that was going on. But since I was seeing a nephrologist for my kidneys, I was seeing optometrists and eye specialists for my eye problems. And I was seeing <clears throat> other specialists, rheumatologists for my inflamed joints and things. I ended up being treated in, in, in not, not the best ways for me because they weren't looking at me as a whole person. They were just looking at the individual aspects of me that was their area of expertise and specialty. So we need to make sure that we're actually getting to the root cause of the problem. <clears throat> the root cause of the problem for me was a systemic issue. And no one ever identified that for me. I identified that for me actually in my 50s, which is really scary because I had challenges and problems with lots of things and still do for 30 years that I probably didn't need to had there been a more cohesive approach to solving that the problem. What the heck is wrong with me? Why am I sick? Not Why am I not healthy? I guess we were, we didn't define the problem. We weren't asking the right question. So it's important to define the problem and make sure you're actually solving the problem, not just symptoms of the problem. That's one of the most common errors. Then we, when we, when we know what the problem is that we want to solve, when we have a problem question, we want to generate ideas. We want to brainstorm. What are some of the ways that we can solve this problem? And then once we get a whole big list of solutions, because there's always more than two, right? We want to find ways to evaluate those solutions. And we'll talk about some of the tools probably tomorrow that we can use to evaluate solutions. Uh, and then of all the solutions and after we do our analysis, we want to select something and take action on it, right? We're going to pick something. We're going to implement that solution and then we're going to evaluate the results. We're going to look and see what the results are. And we're either going to go back to the problem solving stage and cycle that around or we're going to find ways to to make that a process and a procedure and a system to guarantee that we're always going to get positive results from our process so we do in the whole get up and go challenge it's all about installing the soap framework in our subconscious so that whenever we're faced with a change or a challenge in any area or aspect of our life we are guaranteeing that we're going to be better off than had we just won it and not had a process for handling change and challenges that show up in our life so problem solving decision making i personally love this topic actually wrote a book on it so I obviously have a lot of interest in it uh, trained and taught thousands of people on these concepts over the years and over the decades now when it comes to choosing among alternatives again it's a process right we can organize our alternatives and we can group them into different categories or, or ideas we can assign values to them um, there's a, a strategy which isn't on the 35 tools list called nominal group technique which we'll probably talk about in the next get up and go challenge because even my eight-year-old daughter knew how to do nominal group technique when she was naming her puppies. So if she can do it, everybody that's, that's ever heard about it can absolutely use it as a strategy for coming up with the, the best decision for you at the time. Um, we want to know and make sure that we're considering the objectives. What is the objective of the particular situation and problem we're trying to solve? Is it we need a fast decision and we just need to take action quickly? Is it cost is the most expensive thing? Is it time or other resources that have to be taken into consideration? So we want to decide on what our objectives are with, with choosing among the alternatives. We want to apply a strategy to decide among those alternatives uh, in light of the values that we've assigned. And, you know, I like to use important, urgent resources. Um, and then I, I like to always take a gut check or feeling about the, the thing that we're discussing. So if we're thinking of a, adding a new product line and we're all we're choosing among five alternatives I'll do all of the 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 science and the subjective stuff but I will always look at that at the end and say what does my gut say that is the right thing to do and does all of this information line up with what we intuitively want to do and where we're going and does it match our values and, and things as an organization and then um, we find ways and we ask ourselves is the decision that we're making is the alternative we're choosing. What impact is that going to have on other areas and other aspects of our life or the organization, right? What, what else is it going to impact? Because whenever we solve one problem, what happens? We create more. If we think that we need to make $50,000 a month and that's going to solve all our problems and we'll never have problems in the world, surprise, whatever level of income you have, you, you also attract those category of problems so at five thousand dollars a month you have five thousand dollar a month problems at fifty thousand dollars a month you have fifty thousand dollar a month problems it's just a different set of problems or challenges that face us 
no matter where we are. No matter where we are, challenge and change is inevitable. So we want to have processes and things that we go to that will help us deal with those situations. Um, and then we want to use different strategies and tools to help us make decisions and help us keep track of are the decisions and the choices that we implemented getting us the results we want? Are they moving us toward what we want or away from what we want? And then we try something else, right? We tend to make things so complicated. And me even saying, hey, there's 35 different tools. And there's more than that because I've got probably seven or eight on this page that I use regularly. And none of them were on the list of 35 that Success Labs came up with. So <clears throat> the important thing is to have a process for solving problems and making decisions and remembering that the, it's you know a five or six step process what's the problem identify the problem brainstorm solutions evaluate those solutions and the different possibilities and and have a criteria and a way of judging them pick one find a, a have a strategy and a technique and a tool and a way of deciding among alternatives maybe you put them all in a hat and you draw one out you can do that you can use any strategy that you want to pick a, a solution and try it uh, there's some tools that I thought were really interesting that they, they brought up and I, I had forgotten about them um, that we'll talk about tomorrow. Um, so that's it. Problem solving decision making. Love to know your experience with that. Are you a, a do you consider yourself an awesome decision maker? Do you have no problem solving problems on a scale of one to ten? How would you rate yourself in your problem solving ability and your decision making ability? Now, again, two different things, right? I know people that have incredible like nine or 10 level problem solving abilities, yet they, you know, in their everyday life cannot make a decision to, to save their soul. You know, they can't decide where to go out to dinner. They can't decide what to wear. They can't decide just the little everyday things, but they're awesome on an organizational level, helping with the more complicated tasks of problem solving and decision making. So there, there is that. All right, that's it. Tomorrow, of course, we're going to talk about focusing on solutions. And then I'm going to share these 35 tools because I think some of them are awesome. Like I said, I've used almost all of them. And a lot of them I, I teach and I share as part of the Get Up and Go Challenge, which December 1st through 31st is the final 2020 free 30 plus day Get Up and Go Challenge. We'd love to have you join us. We share the SOAP framework and we make sure that you can apply the SOAP framework to every area and aspect of your life, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationships, and contribution. The, the key areas and the key needs and the key, you know, most important aspects of our life. We want to be able to apply that problem-solving, decision-making, change, challenge philosophy to everything that we do. That's it. Have an awesome day. Any questions? I might have like glossed over this because I've been doing it for so long. When you're so close to something, it's often hard to explain it to other people because we tend to overcomplicate things that we know a lot about. And we really don't need to know all the things. We just need to know, hey, it's a process like any other process. That means you can learn it. I can learn it. We can all apply it and use it to make our lives better. Have an awesome day. I'll be with you tomorrow.